cruise on through. Okay, so how much energy would we need to ionize the atom? That is going to be our next goal. Okay, so uh, we're going to save this. We're going to erase this. And we're going to write up here D equals 2.32 times 10 to the negative 16th meters. Da, 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 da. Okay, and so now what we need is to calculate uh, the voltage. And so we're going to use the same equation. D equals alpha times the voltage divided by the charge of the electron times the separation distance between the two. Wow, my E's and my L's look very similar. And so then we're going to get uh, the voltage equals the um, distance that the nucleus moves times the charge of the electron times the separation distance. Oh, DEL, that's cute. I wrote shorthand for delete, divided by alpha. Um, and so what you end up getting when you plug in the numbers, um, oh, I guess I should say, so the ionization um, of the atom is going to happen when, I guess I didn't really need to save that. Um, so it's, the atom is going to ionize when the nucleus moves all the way over here, because by then um, the electron cloud will be, well, um, like this and well, okay, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, that drawing doesn't seem to work. Um, but basically if, if the nucleus surpasses the, the radius of the electron cloud, then they have effectively separated. The nucleus is outside of the electron cloud because it has moved so much. And so in that case, um, it will ionize when the separation distance equals the radius of the atom. So instead of this number, you actually plug in um, the radius of the atom. So sorry, my little word got changed to rel. Maybe it stands for reality, I don't know. Um, and what you end up getting when you plug in the numbers, uh, I trust that you know how to use a calculator probably better than I do at this point. Um, you get a voltage of 1.09 times 10 to the 8 volts or 109 mega volts or million volts. Mega because we like to be lazy. Technically, that's the term. That is a huge number. That is a very, very, very high voltage. Um, for context, in our homes, we have coming out of the wall 120 or 240 uh, volts for large appliances. Um, in long stretches of our electrical grid wires, you might find voltages around 34 kilovolts um, or 34,000 volts. In the lab that I worked in, we worked with 60,000 kilovolts. That was really intense. Uh, you have to be really careful because arcing, uh, basically tiny, tiny lightning, <laughs> um, is very likely with 60,000 kilovolts. Um, and the highest pr voltage produced in a lab um, was at Oak Ridge National Lab, which generated uh, 25 or between 25 and 30 megavolts. Um, so 109 megavolts is huge, but this does happen. Lightning. And actually, as I was doing research for this, someone made a really interesting point that um, nuclear weapons generate enough energy to ionize atoms. So uh, not as much fun as lightning. I guess lightning's also not extremely fun. Uh, but to put this in context, these are the types of um, voltages that uh, lightning um, is generated under, which is why it's able to ionize air. So wild, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So I find this stuff fascinating. I hope that this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about the problem that we covered here or the content that we dabbled in. Um, and yes, we will continue our exploration of electrodynamics, but we're getting close to wrapping it up. So let me know if there is a burning topic in electrodynamics that you really want me to cover, because otherwise I'm going to peruse through the book and find things that I like. <laughs> okay, thanks very much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye, friends!